Do you think most INFJs have social phobia or anxiety, or is it just me? Is it common for us to have existential anxiety? I think a lot of INFJs have anxiety, um, especially social anxiety. I think that it comes from the fact that we look at the world differently and we understand that we're different than everybody else. And we have a, a difficult time fitting in with other people. That's something that we recognize very early on in our lives. I've read some books by Lauren Sapala, who's an INFJ, and she talks a lot about INFJ anxiety. So I think it's something that a lot of us deal with. I did a podcast episode with her as well, and you should definitely check it out. I'll put a link for it in the show notes. Um, I think a lot of us have existential anxiety too, because we can see things coming. You know, we we have this way of predicting the future and it's not like a psychic thing. It's more like an intuition thing. We see patterns of how people behave. And so we kind of know things are coming. There's a saying that says that history repeats itself and it's totally true. A lot of people have patterns of behavior and they just keep doing the same things over and over again. You know, people talk about how difficult it is to change and it really is extremely difficult. So once you understand somebody's patterns, then you can kind of see how things are going to happen because you know they're going to do the same thing that they've always done because that's what, that's what they do. And it's true for us too. You know, it's really difficult for us to change too. So we know that we're going to do the same thing. Once you start to understand your own patterns, then you're like, okay, this is how this is going to happen. Like this is always how it happens and this is what's going to happen. So it's easy for us to have existential anxiety. I think a lot of that too revolves around feeling fulfilled in your life, feeling like you have a purpose and that you're making the world a better place. It also comes from the people that we surround ourselves with. A lot of us have self-love deficiency problems, you know, like I was talking about my problems with that. And so we end up, we end up surrounding ourselves with people who aren't great for us. And then we feel bad about having those people in our lives, but then we feel bad about removing those people from our lives. And it's difficult when those people are your family members or your husband or your wife, you know, it's difficult when they're close friends or, you know, maybe it's your boss. And so it's going to require a big change for you to, to remove those people from your life. There's, there's somebody in my life recently who they do something that I've asked them not to do. And it bothers me every time that they do it. And it's kind of a really big thing. And I've asked them multiple times not to do it. I've told them that I don't like it, that it hurts me and it causes me a lot of anxiety and a lot of problems. But for some reason, this person just keeps doing this thing. And so I have kind of struggled with how many times do I tell them they need to stop before I just decide that they're not going to stop and I need to do something else, you know? And it's difficult because I really like this person. They're a really good friend, sort of. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, they're a really good friend except for this one thing. But this one thing is a big thing for me. And every time it comes up, it makes me have a really bad day, sometimes two or three days. And it's like, why do I keep doing this to myself? And so for me, I feel like at this point, it's time for me to start distancing myself from that person because I've set boundaries. I've told them it's a problem and they're not respecting my boundaries. So if I don't continue to enforce those boundaries, then there's no reason to keep setting those boundaries, right? If, if I'm just going to let them walk all over me and I know that that makes me feel bad when they do it, then the problem isn't with them anymore. It's with me. So I need to decide, is it okay for them to keep doing this or do I need to do something else? And so for me, I've kind of decided that I need to do something else. I need to make a change because it's not okay what keeps happening. And I want something different in my life. So, I mean, for me, that's a part of existential anxiety. I feel like a lot of times I know what my purpose is and I'm set in a certain course, but there are still times when I question it. 
there are still times when I wonder, you know, am I doing enough? Is, is there something else I should be doing? And I think those are the times where I really have to think about who I want to be as a person. What kind of contribution do I want to make to the world? Can I, is there something else that I can do to help people while I'm here? So, you know, when I, when I get into that mindset, I, I look at how can I help other people and that, that helps me get out of it and start thinking about what I can be doing rather than, you know, what I'm not doing or what I missed out on. Learn more about your INFJ personality on my podcast, The Quiet Ones. The Quiet Ones is a weekly show where we dive into understanding self-love, depression, anxiety, and so much more from an INFJ perspective. I offer up in-depth coaching and unmatched empathy. Join me for an amazing personal growth experience. The Quiet Ones podcast is available on all major podcast platforms and at thequietonespodcast.com. Hi there. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm working very hard to produce content that will help you and I really, really appreciate your support. Also, if you want some more inspiration, check out this video right here.